Hi there, Market Boy with you once again out in the woods. I'm here with uh, Janer B and Planer Boy, and we're going to modify our trusty DeWalt thickness planer. All the boards in this building, all the one inch and two inch boards, were planed, have been run through the, uh, the DeWalt planer. And it's got a three knife, uh, conventional three knife cutter head. But today we're going to modify it with a, a, a Shelix helical cut cutter head. Now, <laughs> this comes from uh, Bird Tool in Kentucky. Nice people to deal with. Um, the irony is that the, the single cutter head here, which is a thing of beauty, cost more than I paid for the original machine. First up, we're going to do a decibel test. Uh, um, with a, an app I've got on my little tablet here. It's a, this is a very noisy machine in operation. We're going to run uh, a board through the uh, planer with using the, the conventional cutter heads as supply. And uh, we're going to check the noise level on the decibel meter. And we're going to use the same board once we've been done the installation. We're going to use the same board with everything in the same. is a straightforward disassembly uh, to get at the existing cutter head. One of the reasons that I uh, got this planer was because of the turbo extraction of the chips. As per the instructions uh, suggesting we uh, clean the workspace, we're going to blow some chips out of the machine here to tidy it up and uh, blow some air across the floor, a nice clean tidy workspace. We're just uh, uh, removing the conventional uh, knives from the cutter head, which is standard procedure whenever you're changing knives or anything. Nothing, nothing unusual about this stage of the game. Step four, remove the cutter rotate lock plate by removing the two Phillips head screws. Be careful to catch the spring that's underneath the bracket. Oh, there's the spring. There's the spring there. Step five, remove the handle. Next, remove the four screws and the cover plate. We've now exposed the roller drive chain and the cutter head drive pulley. And the next stage is to remove the screws on the end of each of these three shafts or these two shafts. And we need to remove the two sprockets together. Keep them together. Put them over here. We've got a, a poly V-belt is what drives the cutter head and we have to rotate the cutter head and judiciously Remove the belt. There's the V-belt gone. Obstacle number one, I don't have a socket big enough to accommodate the nut on the end of the cutter head shaft. Uh, we are in the woods, out in the woods after all. I did manage to get it off with this adjustable, which I wouldn't normally want to use, but the nut was very loose, so off, off she comes. Take the... Uh pulley idler or the chain, chain tensioner off there and then slide the pulley off taking care not to lose the woodruff key which is right here well it's not a woodruff key it's some other kind of key but there we are we've got that a little spacer spacer slash washer here and then there's a snap ring internal snap ring there, you got it? There's a snap ring removed. Now over to the other side of the machine and remove the cover on the, on the other side. And remove the snap rings from the two roller drive shafts here. Easier than the, the last one, that's for sure. Uh, we'll 
close the snap rings and we disconnect the spring from the tensioner easy enough and now remove the chain and sprockets together easier said than done. here they come and there'll be a couple of keys in here also oh no there it's a toothed a toothed sprocket but we do have a washer on the back there I'll leave that there and then we remove the three Allen bolts that hold the gearbox in place. Step 20 is pull, pull the gearbox back, but don't completely disconnect it from the machine. Yeah. It's coming? Yeah. Okay. I'm, st I'm stuck on the end. <laughs> Boy, good job I had a piece of hardwood driftwood come by. Yeah. And now we have to, there's a, there's a, a helical gear uh, screwed onto the end of the shaft, which we now have to remove. But I found a six millimeter socket to be a, a much tighter fit, uh, but it was unexpectedly loose and very easy to remove. And of course this goes back on the, the end of the new Shelix cutter head. Now to uh, insert the, the new Shelix cutter head. And be very careful sliding this in here. The carbide cutters are very, very sharp and it's very easy to mar the inside of the main bearing housing. Are you ready on that end? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Looks good. Yeah. Okay, close. You're almost there now. Yeah. Is there a stop? Well, there's a stop at my end. Uh, as soon as I can see the uh, clip, uh, okay, good, good, good. I think that looks pretty good actually. It's. It's right where it needs to be at this end here, so no need for any more hammering. Rotates freely at the moment. So now it's um, to reassemble everything. We just do the reverse of, uh, we just go backwards here. The helical gear goes into the end of the drive assembly. And don't forget the washer here. So we've reattached the spring to the uh, chain tensioner there. And I think we're ready to put the cover plate back on. And don't forget the snap ring. One of the things to remember here is there was a spacer uh, that was the last thing to come off the shaft. So we put the spacer on and then we insert the key and then we tippy tap the, the pulley onto the shaft and on goes the nut. Next up, uh, replace the poly V belt and the instructions uh, mention that uh, at the, the motor end, it's, it's difficult to see when it's fully on the pulley, so that's something we need to take care of. But we just roll it, roll it onto the main pulley here, and we're slightly off up here. There. Always amazes me how resilient these poly uh, V-belts are. They're amazingly tough and never slip. And here comes the drive roller chain and sprocket tensioner arm complete with 
the spring. Did put the cover plate back on now. And back goes the handle. No, uh, no cutter head lock required for the Shelix cutter head. Okay. The uh, dust extractor head goes on with the red tie downs here. It looks like we're done. So we're ready to. So are we gonna? We're gonna fire her up. Uh, several differences it makes for a very smooth cut and actually it's a little bit wider too because previously it always get a little bit of a ridge there so that's a benefit and the sound is just smooth as butter and doesn't slow down nearly as much so it's great very happy so you're a happy planer boy very happy planer boy wow that's uh, that's amazing the difference so we have a cutter head now that is uh, significantly better than the previous uh, stock model cutter head. Produces a wonderful finish on the wood and notably quieter. We're clocking five to six decibels less, which doesn't sound like a lot, but gone is the ear-splitting screaming of the uh, previous cutter head. And uh, so we're looking forward to many more hours of uh, a comfortable planing.